What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's true crime story is going to be about the case of Snow the Salt Queen. She was a TikTok star who eventually ended up murdering one of her friends and then later tried to cover up that murder and act like nothing happened. This is going to be the story of Yandere Freak aka Snow the Salt Queen. Now before we get too much into the murder, let's backtrack a little bit and talk up to the events that led up to it. Firstly, it should be known that I'm not going to be mentioning the victim's name or identity because I think I read somewhere that the family does not want the name to be out there, so I would like to respect their wishes and just not mention their name and if you guys could also not mention it in the comments. For the purpose of the video, I'm just going to be referring to the victim as A and obviously Snow as just Snow. So the main events all happened last year in 2021. Now leading up to it, let's talk about A and how she eventually became good friends with Snow. So A was the daughter of two geneticists. Now as they hit their teenage years, A as well as Snow, both identified as non-binary. So I'm going to refer to both of them as they just to respect their pronouns. Now A grew up as a nice, sweet, caring person. You could say they sort of grew up with a sheltered life. And it wasn't really until they started going to middle school and high school that they really started to interact more with other people and other kids their age. And it was at this time where A started to actually get into cosplay and anime and the whole excitement of the genre. They started to find comfort in cosplay, as I think many people do. I think cosplay for a lot of people can be seen as sort of an escape from reality and for people that are suffering with things maybe in their IRL life, cosplay allows them to kind of escape that reality and be somebody else and I know how that can feel because we've all played online games and taken online personas. A lot of us have more or less become a different person online and we know how that feels. To be somebody else and escape the realities and troubles of your real life, it can, it can be nice. And it was through the whole cosplay situation that A eventually ended up meeting Snow. I believe they were like at a convention one day and they happened to meet each other, they exchanged contact info, they became friends. But unfortunately, Snow's lifestyle and A's lifestyle were very, very different. Snow is a person that liked to party and liked to smoke, you know, the Mary Jane and liked to drink with their friends. A was somebody that, as I said, grew up a little bit more sheltered and away from those kinds of things. So it's pretty clear that they were influenced a lot by Snow and their friends. And eventually, upon hanging out with Snow more often, A took on a lot of that lifestyle to their own. Now, it wasn't a huge deal at first, but eventually, Snow's sort of chaotic lifestyle rubbed onto A, and in turn, A's parents found out about it and witnessed their child acting differently and acting strange and wondering, this isn't the person we raised, like, what's going on with you? Unfortunately, A found more comfort hanging out with Snow and their friends, and eventually they sort of had a bit of a falling out with their parents, and because their parents didn't approve of their new lifestyle hanging out with Snow, it got to a point where A sort of distanced themselves from their parents. And this is probably where things just got worse. We don't really know much about Snow and their past, and how they became the person that they are today. But what we do know is that from their actions and what they do and their moral stance on things, we can see that there's there's probably a lot going on up there that we probably don't know. And it's not good. Aside from the main topic of this video being the murder charge, Snow has had a lot of other controversies leading up to. For example, there's been accusations thrown at them where they were selling their famous cosplay wig for like 300 bucks and people bought that wig and they reviewed it and it turned out to literally just be some party city wig and it just was not worth the price that they were selling it for. Another example is Snow often dressed up as cosplay characters that were underage and that's kind of problematic because she was kind of marketing them in a you know, adult way. And probably one of the worst examples is the whole cemetery scandal. Now, if you don't know about that, essentially Snow and their friends, they were shooting cosplay videos or TikToks. 
They were dressed up and they were dancing and posing, sitting on graves right in front of graves. And the whole thing was just seen as very disrespectful and they got a lot of backlash for it to the point where Snow even came out and publicly said, hey, I got permission from the cemetery, okay? All of you haters, like, stop hating, okay? It's all good. But the funny thing about that is the uh, superintendent of the cemetery came out like publicly just a short while after that and literally said, no, no, I, I didn't give you guys any permission to do that. And if you do that again, I'm gonna call the cops. And after that, that just led to even more backlash from the scandal and Snow just kind of took it with a grain of salt and just kept posting. And it seems that Snow sort of thrived on controversy or scandal. And whatever controversy they got in next, they just used that to kind of fuel their platform and just keep posting and use those views and momentum to just keep building their empire. And Snow did sort of have an empire. They had like 1.5 or 1.6 million followers on TikTok. They had tens of thousands of followers on Instagram. They were very successful and well-known in the cosplay sphere. And the saddest part is that Snow was actually really talented and really good at her cosplays. Like here's a couple examples. You can clearly see that she's good at what she does, she's passionate about it, and she knows how to play the part. Now, let's get back to the timeline. As I've already mentioned, Snow and their friends liked to often party, they liked to drink, they liked to smoke together and get high. It was at this time where A was finishing high school and getting ready to go to college and they were really excited and because they were close friends with Snow uh, and the whole coronavirus thing was going on, the college that they were going to attend ended up kind of closing down and everything was online and so A opted in to stay with Snow and their friends in their house for the time being until things kind of returned to normal. Now as you can imagine, with all of the mishaps and craziness that happens at Snow's place, you can only imagine how it's going to affect A who's now moving in there. And now we're finally coming up to the night of. Snow and her friends and A were watching a show called Gotham, which if you don't know, it's a spin-off of Batman, but it's like, it's a spin-off show on the CW, I believe. And they were obviously drinking and smoking. A lot of them were already like pretty tipsy and, you know, hyped up. And Snow thought it would be fun to grab something that she's been hanging on to for a while, and that was a handgun, a pistol. Snow claims that the pistol was given to them by their ex-boyfriend who uh, emptied all the bullets out of it so it was safe and it was just a pistol by itself and Snow thought it would be a fun idea to party with it and show it to their friends and allegedly one of their friends said oh yeah like hold it up to my head and uh, shoot me and Snow allegedly held the pistol to their head and then lowered it and they were all laughing and having fun and they were all buzzed out of their minds probably and this is where A unfortunately influenced probably by the party and the environment around them. They allegedly asked Snow to do that to me next and uh, point the gun at me and shoot me. And that's when Snow, laughing, having a good time, raised the pistol to A's head and pulled the trigger. And it went off. You see, the thing that Snow and their friends didn't realize is that even if you empty out the bullets from the magazine of a gun, there's often one left, still in the barrel, and unfortunately, that bullet ended up killing A. Snow and their friends immediately started panicking and calling the police, and there was blood just everywhere. When doctors were able to scan A's head, they were able to see that there was pretty much zero brain activity. And they were on life support for the next two days, but ultimately passed away. And as for Snow, they were charged with manslaughter. In Snow's defense, they claimed that they didn't know that the gun was loaded and they thought it was unloaded and they thought that their ex-boyfriend took all the bullets out. But even if that's the case, you still have to do your due diligence and you still have to be a responsible person and do your research and realize that there can still always be one bullet left in the barrel. I'm not claiming to be an expert on guns or anything because I'm not, but I even knew about that just from like a Jackie Chan movie I saw when I was a kid where Jackie Chan like emptied the clip of a gun but then a bad guy hit it and the gun goes flying in the air and he yells out, watch out, there's still one bullet left and then it hits the ground and that bullet fires. But regardless if you've seen stuff like that in a movie or not, if you have a firearm, you need to be responsible because firearms kill. That is 
what they are made for. Eventually, Snow was released from prison with a $20,000 bond, and basically they could, um, they could go back home and they could live freely until their trial. And even though all of these events took place, and A was no longer with us, Snow acted like nothing happened. They did post on their TikTok that they were gonna be taking a little bit of a hiatus, but they would be back. But that hiatus only lasted like a couple weeks before they were back to posting regularly as if nothing happened at all. And this part of the story I think is just an interesting topic because I just wanna ask you guys, like, why? Why do you think Snow just continued to post as if nothing happened and continued to make their TikToks and upload videos and post on their Insta? Why do you think they continue to do so as if nothing happened? Do you think it was a, I mean, there could be multiple, there could be a multitude of different reasons. Obviously, Snow appears to be a very morally deprived person if they are posting without any remorse about what they did and what happened and no respect to the victim. But on top of that, it's, it's kind of hard to imagine what's going through their mind. Allegedly, Snow did make a lot of money from from her job doing TikTok and making videos and cosplays and selling things. So I'm trying to think, do you guys think that was a factor? Maybe they knew that this was gonna be a hefty and expensive court case coming up and their whole life was on the line? Do you think maybe they continue just posting because they felt that, I don't know, this is like the best way I can make up enough money to rack up enough to spend on my court fees and attorney fees? Do you think they simply just didn't care? Was this Snow's way of coping with the trauma of the situation? Or was it an entirely different reason altogether? I'm really curious to know what you guys think because some of you guys would obviously know better than me. So please leave a comment down below listing your thoughts on just why. Why did they continue posting and why did they try to cover this whole thing up? Now. Eventually, you could say justice prevailed in a way because the rumors began to spread and word soon got out. It was eventually made public what Snow had done and everyone soon knew that they were responsible for another person's death. Now, if Snow's previous scandals weren't enough, this one was. Snow received overwhelming backlash to the point where they ended up deleting all of their social media accounts, TikTok, Instagram, just everything was either deleted or left indefinitely inactive. And now we're at the point where we don't know what Snow is up to. Their online presence has gone completely dark. And now all we can do is wait for the trial to update and for it to take its course. And that is the end of the story for now. Until we get more updates on the situation and how the court case pans out, that's all we know. Actually guys, sorry, I forgot. There was a little bit of an update that did happen recently. Allegedly Snow was on parole or probation for the events that transpired and allegedly they broke some of their parole agreements because they they weren't like checking in properly with their parole officer. They, they weren't uh, recharging their GPS ankle monitor. They were doing a couple of other things that kind of, um, you know, went against their agreement. So it'll be interesting to see how that kind of comes into play with the total outcome of the case. But for now, that is all we have to go off of. So if you guys know more about Snow's case, uh, feel free to comment down below, keep us updated. The whole case is just really unfortunate. And I think it just kind of speaks volumes about how certain lifestyles can affect people and how you really need to be responsible with a lot of things you know drugs partying drinking firearms there's just there's a lot to take away from this story and i hope you guys can take away some of that anyways if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like hit that sub button if you're new i really appreciate you guys watching with that said i will see you guys in the next video good night